How's it going, everybody? Dregast here, and welcome to This is the Police. I have been waiting to play this game for weeks now. Uh, it's just been so many games releasing as of late, I didn't want to overrun you guys with new games on the channel. Which, realistically, I have been because there's so many new series going on, and I apologize for that, but I cannot overlook this one. I want to share it with you guys, and I want to experience it with you guys. So we're going to do a playthrough of This is the Police. Now, brief explanation of the game. It is a strategy game where you are a chief of a police station, uh, but it plays more like you're a dispatcher for a police station. Basically, you have to choose how many units you want and you also have to train your units you have to keep your uh, employees happy if you will in a very troubled city this this city has gangs it has crooked government and it just is so damn fun the storyline is amazing and the gameplay is just as good so let's stop talking about it and let's actually get into it now I will warn you guys ahead of time for people who don't like storylines or cutscenes this is a heavy cutscene game some of the cutscenes are upwards of five minutes uh, so feel free to cut ahead if you don't like that because the gameplay is amazing as well You don't even need to follow the storyline sometimes But I'm gonna keep it in for you guys who do like to follow a storyline and it is a good one I will tell you that from the little that I've seen so far So we're gonna hit a new game here There's gonna be a long cutscene feel free to cut ahead if you want and then we'll get into some gameplay Okay, this is a daily thing where you see what's going on around the city. Sometimes there's some bad things going on. Obviously, if gangs are, you know, increasing or something, you're going to want more police to patrol the city. Uh, there's not much going on right now. Mayor Rogers Sex Maniac City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's resignation. Uh, we'll get more into that during the cutscene. Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. So, not much going on right now. We're gonna go to work. And I think there's a pretty long cutscene here, if I remember correctly. Okay, yes, this is the cutscene, so I'll shut up and let you guys listen to this. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least, that's what my colleagues say. So Freeburg They're is the city. Press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Okay, so we're at a news conference here. Good morning! Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you not know about it in advance? Um, I've been expecting this bullshit from the mayor. Ooh, I don't know if I want to be that aggressive. I want to be nice to the government right now. Uh, I still don't know if I want to be a crooked cop or not. I'll say the mayor discussed it with me. Mayor Rogers told me that he wants a fresh face running Freeburg PD, so no, it didn't come as a surprise. 
Do you already know the name of your successor? Um, no. I'm. I, you know what? I'm just gonna be silent. You know, he said, "Don't tell the press anything." So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? I'm gonna say no way in this regard. I still don't fully understand the storyline, so I'm a little confused. He's made up his mind to leave. I don't see anything affecting that decision. Uh, I actually forget who Kendrick is. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Mm, ooh, okay, yeah, definitely gonna say no comment here. A lot of these are bad things to say, especially to press, so we will just say nothing. Usually I prefer answers to all your questions, but this situation I have to say no comment. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Definitely not. That's just not possible. Mayor Rogers is a true professional and he makes his decisions carefully. There's no place on, in our jobs for hard feelings. Thank you. Okay, so that's it, and I think now... Oh, shit, there's another cutscene. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. I hate this guy Mayor already. Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack, I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire any time soon. One hundred and eighty days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. I have a new assistant, Troy Starr. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. What? Oh. Okay. I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Starr? Yes. 
Go fuck yourself, Troy Whoa. Star. Okay, well that was an eventful day one. A lot of cutscene as you guys can see. So we're probably gonna have a longer episode this first one just so you guys can actually see some gameplay of this game. Uh, because I did not expect it to be that long. But I will keep it in for all you story buffs out there. Uh, Jack Boyd on his res resignation asked the mayor, Civil servants wages won't be raised this year. People await a fresh look from next police chief. So... If you weren't paying attention there or you kind of just lost track, I got 180 days left to my uh, career and basically I want to earn enough money to retire. That's the whole gist of it. The government just wants everything to keep quiet, but I have an assumption that that is not going to happen. Let's go to work and hopefully this day we can actually dispatch some people and do the actual gameplay. Cops don't oh my the god, okay. Cafeteria this is anymore. just rough for me, but Some I'm excited to get into the gameplay. Sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines, or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eaten here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Okay, finally, would you like to do tips on how the game works? I'm a 60-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement, and I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. I have played enough to know how to play, so we should be totally fine. So we're currently on shift B. We have two shifts, obviously, as with most places. Uh, one shift works the night, one shift works the day. Now, I'll briefly go over these cards for you guys. The top star is how proficient they are. An average unit is about 150. Anything higher than that, they're going to be a really good worker. Anything lower than that, they might need some backup. Uh, the side, that little green bar, is their energy bar. You can make them work overtime and everything, but if that drops down, they will, at least I believe so, work worse, you know, make mistakes and everything, and that is not good. And finally, you can see this little badge in Kochi's Corner. Uh, <laughs> Kochi's Corner. Corner. That sounds funny. Uh, anyways, that is uh, a promotion, essentially. So if you send out that promoted unit with any other unit, they will work harder because they are essentially working with their boss. You can also award these. I think it's weekly. You get one to award to someone, and that will help them out, give them a boost. Obviously, once you get promoted in your job, you're going to work harder, and that's exactly how it's used. And you can stack them as well. I can make this unit even more promoted if I do want to. This down here is my detective team. These guys will do, you know, basically FBI stuff. If there's a murder scene, they will try and figure it out, and then we have to plot together what happened. I haven't actually got too far into that, so I don't know much about them yet, but uh, the generic police workers, I do. So let's start today and get into the actual gameplay. Okay, and here we are in our shady city. What the hell? What? I don't even remember what that was. Okay, well, that is the police station, I believe, right here. And we did have our first call in Everyday Mall. We got a hit and run here. A married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot over over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but once he saw that he'd hit a bum, he got back in the van and quickly drove away. So I don't th see that there's going to be any sort of threat here, so we are going to send Purdy... Or, sorry, yeah, Purdy and... Price, oh god, Price is like the worst unit ever. I'm almost scared to send her out in, in case she screws up everything. Oh, and we do got another call already. We got a fight. A theater manager reports that during a show of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theater's security guard. Okay, well, there is a fight going on, so we're going to want a decent unit. Let's send in Yancey and then something smaller like Austin here. There we go. 
So now, as you can see, we did send out these units. You can see them on the map. They are going out to the crimes. It's going to take them a while to resend them out, so this is where the strategy comes in. You don't want to send too many people out, because if a big crime comes in, you're obviously going to be understaffed. But you also don't want to send too few out, because obviously they might, you know, get into some trouble. So our hit and run, we got a report. At the end of the crimes, it ex explains what happens. Offenders escaped, officers unharmed, which is, I believe, a bad thing. I think Purdy's star rank did drop. Uh, generally, they get discouraged when bad things happen, and if they do well, they uh, increase the ranking. So we also got the fight here. Uh, hopefully this one worked better. Yeah, offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. So I got plus 10 for Austin and Yancey. So one good, one bad so far, and we are in a storm right now. Okay, armed robbery in the suburb. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun. Oh man, robbed a videotape store and made off with a whole collection of adult movies. Okay, that would be not happening in 2016. You know damn well this is the 80s when porn is an important commodity. <laughs> the criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. Okay, I don't think there's going to be much of a threat here because, well, they already ran off. So we're going to send two of our less skilled workers over there. Now, we got something in the city. We got another fight. A brother and sister clash with each other over... Their deceased father, according to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them, and our security guard is off tonight. So I'm actually going to wait here, because uh, these units are almost back in. We should have enough time here to get Austin back, and uh, there we go. So we can send out Yancey and Austin over to here. I just didn't want to send one police out, just in case. And we got an assault in the ghetto. Okay, that's a little creepy. Uh, a passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician. They ran away with his guitar and his money. Okay, I don't think there's a huge threat here, but it is the ghetto, so sometimes crazy shit can happen, so I'm just gonna send out Kochi and Purdy, and worst case scenario, I can just send out Price alone. Oh, okay, arm robbery in the suburb. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. So this is where you gotta decide what to do. You're basically leading your units. They'll call you for support, and this is exactly what's happening. So we can either knock on the door, turn on the siren and loudspeaker, or sneak into the house through an open window. I think that's a good way to get shot by a startled criminal. So I'm gonna knock on the door and open up This Is The Police. We'll see if that actually worked. Fuck! Are you kidding me? I already got an officer dead? Okay, well, maybe I should have snuck through the window after all. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Well, that fucking sucks. That's a, that, that, that's a great first day of work. You already killed someone on the job. I'm sorry, Asano, a moment of silence for her. God damn it, that sucks. Okay, and the fight report is in. Offender caught, officers unharmed, and everything is good. Perfect. Assault report is in as well in the ghetto. Offender caught, officers unharmed once again. So aside from a cop death, which is a very huge thing, tonight's going pretty well. I think we're three good cases and one bad case so yeah and that is the end of day number well i guess day number two technically we didn't do anything day number one though we, we learned a lot of the story though so we're gonna end the day and now we can actually choose if we want people to work overtime now just to be safe i'm going to make some of them work overtime. I don't want them to get too upset with me either. I want to actually make Price work overtime to increase her level. I'm going to send her out with some of the better units. Shift A. Let's actually take a look at Shift A. Oh, they actually got way more police than Shift A. So uh, maybe that was a bad idea, but we're going to end the day anyways, and we will deal with it tomorrow. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. 
Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Half a million, that's what Why I want. Not a okay. Whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Oh, insert creepy music. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people. Jesus. Old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. I don't know about that because I control you. Uh, yeah, we are definitely going to work with the Mafia, by the way, guys. That's how you earn money, is going against the law. Let's be honest here. Francis Kendrick announces retirement date. Legendary singer Gennaro Crespo comes to Freeburg. Construction of Cinema Museum postponed again. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the singer. That's going to mean uh, there's probably going to be a concert, meaning more crimes, possibly. Okay, here we go. Day number three. Price is trying to get the day off. My band is playing a charity concert for some six children. Can I have the day off? Well, I have so many officers over here. Yes, let's keep my officers happy. If they want the day off, they can have the day off. Here's the stripes I'm talking about, by the way. I can assign these to whoever I feel deserving whenever I want. I actually got two right now. We're not going to do any right now because I don't know how well they're working. So let's start the day and figure out the personalities of each one of these employees. Now, this is actually where we get to choose the song of the day as well. We'll just go through this list here. We'll start with the first one. There's some great music in this game, so I'm going to try and play these as often as possible. Sweet Ginger Green. Okay, here we go. Shift A, July 17th. Man, we haven't even got the starting thing off the screen before someone called in. Vandalism. We received a frightened call from a local cathedral this morning. The abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols and have been broken into pieces. Seems there are even marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Okay, that sounds pretty risky, actually. There might be some crazy-ass Satanists over there or something, so we're gonna send in two decent units, Vandal and Yancey, um, and we'll see what happens there. We can actually recruit some people as well. We want to do that during the day. Uh, so let's recruit some more people. Oh, yes, Grizzly McNally. You have got to be kidding me. That's the best beard ever. Uh, yeah, we're gonna hire one of these guys. Let's hire for Shift B because we got less police over there. 
Uh, well, fuck, I guess we can hire quite a few here. Now, we actually don't have many detectives. This Robert Shero has a good professionalism rating, so I'm going to hire him. Uh, how many do I have for shift A? You know what, I have no idea. We'll figure that out later. You can always change the shifts as well. Uh, so whoever you assign now, you can always alter if you do want to. Also, Shoal Numata, obviously, uh, professionalism is very high, so let's hire her for shift A. Okay, so there we go. We got all our new hirees on, and let's make sure the city is safe. Businessman Harley Jones looking out his window saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. Motherfuckers, let's send out Stovall, and you know what, fuck it, we'll do Roy and Butch Jr. So two bad cops with the chief cop. Okay, and the vandalism report regarding the church of offender caught officers unharmed. Perfect, that's what you want to see. Eddie's Burger, suspicious individual. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken, Eddie, and a Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who she'd seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. Okay, we're gonna send out our best units because obviously if she saw it on TV, that is a dangerous person. Uh, I wish I had these guys back in the police station, but they are clearly out right now. Vandalism report is up. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, officers on harm, that's what you want to see, and we actually did increase Roy a little bit. It's gonna be very difficult to make Roy decent though. Actually, let's look. Isn't he too old to be a cop? I know you can actually fire cops that are too old. You can also figure out some information regarding cops in here. Political views sometimes show up. Oh yeah, we got a lot of old cops I gotta fire, unfortunately. To be fair, I feel really bad uh, getting rid of the old guys, but their ratings are just so bad uh, that you obviously want to. Uh, King Lewis Nightclub, Mr. Boyd, my bouncer, stuffed himself with Mexican food again, and now he can't get off the can. <laughs> Meantime, the line outside the club is stretching around the block. We need someone outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. Alright, which guy here can tell the cool guys from the punks? I gotta say Grant. Grant seems to have a good cool guy radar, so we're gonna send her out. And suspicious individual report. The waiter had mistaken a retired officer, Frank Nero, for the fugitive in question. Wow, well that's awkward. I just sent out two really good units to deal with that as well. And we got some drug sales going on. An anonymous call just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating rink is selling crack to teenagers. Oh god, the old crack clown. That's not obvious at all, you know? Let's not try and hide our identity. Let's make it, you know, nice and colorful and just shine myself into the police radar. Well, we're gonna send out two decent units for that. Oh, and it looks like, what the hell is going on here? Sorry, Chief, but I quit. In one night, I pulled in more cash I earned in a month working at this dump. Wow, Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. I guess I just wasn't cut out to be a cop. Honestly, I'm not even mad that Grant left because her rating sucked. I wish I sent Roy if that was the case. Uh, thanks for your help, Mr. Boyd. Uh, was that from the uh, nightclub? I think so. Wow, that's a decent payout. I mean, I, I lost a cop because of it, but I just get to hire a better cop, essentially. Uh, suicide threat. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. That is the worst first world problem I've ever heard of. Like, who would kill themselves because their chewing gum isn't popular? Like, that is such a hipster thing. All right, we're going to send out Stovall, and I think I'm actually going to fire Roy, so I'm not going to try and increase Roy. Birch Jr. or Birch, okay? I didn't even realize that, but this is son and father right here. That's kind of awesome. Uh, let's send out... Robins, I guess. I don't think we've sent out Robins yet. All right, let's actually go into affairs, go to the police station, and get rid of some of these people. So is this guy technically too old? Let me see. Uh, yes, too old, so I can fire him legally. I'm so sorry. I feel bad about this, but you know what? Too old again. We, we need to get rid of the old crew. I mean, police need to retire. Let's be fair here. You want police to be in physical fit condition. Bush Jr. even looks kind of older. He just looks kind of scraggly. Uh, unfortunately, I can only fire him illegally. I don't want to do that yet because some dangerous consequences can happen. Now, we can hire three more people, but I want to wait for the labor market to kind of prime itself. We actually got Elizabeth Little that just joined. Uh, that's actually a really decent unit, so we are going to hire her. Uh, hell, I might even hire... Yeah, let's hire her for Shift B, and we will wait for the next one, because the professionalism of 130 is really not that good. Oh, and now we are on the drug sales. As the police arrive, a clown is seen making balloon animals for the kids. Uh, is that the crack bullet clown? I, or is this just a false alarm? Cover up in a raincoat and pretend to be an illicit customer. Take the clown onto the ice, cr or sorry, onto the ice and round up any witnesses. 
Carefully watch the clown from the stands. That's got to be the safest bet. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Last time I killed someone by deciding that. But there we go. Offender caught and officers unharmed. Got the crack ceiling clown off the streets. <laughs> and suicide threat report. Let's see what happened here. Offender caught, officers unharmed, yada, yada, yada. Good stuff. All right. End of the day. Day number three is over with. Only 177 more to go, guys. This is going to be a long series, I'll tell you that much. Okay, let's see how Shift B is doing. We got Price here. I wonder... Oh, I can't actually fire her right now. I got to wait for Shift A. Okay, well, we're going to end this one here, guys. I guess we're going to have some feminist issues in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and let me know in the comments below what you guys are thinking. I always like to get input on the first episodes of new series. Just to see if you guys are indeed liking it or not. As always, guys, thanks for watching and liking, and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.